Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. Today Jules and I will review the Leica CL, which is the smallest and lightest interchangeable M-mount rangefinder camera. It was first introduced in 1973, but already discontinued only three years later, despite being a real bestseller. The camera is also the cheapest way to get into the Leica M-mount system, but it comes with a couple of shortcomings. It is also a Leica camera made in Japan because it was created in collaboration with Minolta. So it's a very interesting camera overall. Let's take a closer look at it. And in order to do so, Jules and I went on a couple of photo walks in Salzburg and Munich with it, shooting it with a Folklander 40mm f1.4 Nocton lens and um, Kodak T-Max 400. Let's take a look. The Leica CL was created in collaboration with Minolta. So Leica helped design these cameras, but Minolta actually made them in Japan. And if you look at the market, what is interesting is that both the Minolta CL and the Lights Minolta CL are the very same camera as the Leica CL. So they just go by different names. Interestingly, when the camera was introduced, it was not supposed to compete with the SLRs of the time, but with the more compact cameras of that era. So the Olympus Trip Series, for instance, or the Canonettes or the Yashica GTS. And the primary indication for that is that it came with a 40 millimeter focal length standard lens. So uh, Leica, and that is something that, they, that they've never done uh, before or after the Leica CL, they created a 40 millimeter focal length standard lens, a Sumicron, so which is an F2 in Leica terms. And in addition to that, a 90 millimeter F4 um, specific lens series, which they called C-series and claimed that they were incompatible with the existing Leica M-mount rangefinders. And they did all that because they wanted to offer an inexpensive way um, for people to get into the M-mount system. But what happened is they ended up cannibalizing their own market. So according to many sources, the Leica CL outsold the higher margin, more expensive um, Leica M bodies, like the M5 at the time, um, by uh, two to one. And that, according to many um, reviews that I've read, is the primary reason why Leica had to discontinue um, the Leica CL after three years, because it was um, just eating too much into their profits. <laughs>
So what are the features of the Leica CL? Most importantly, it does offer a built-in light meter that was very innovative at the time because it's um, sitting on a little arm that is located behind the lens and in front of the shutter and that you activate by um, pulling the um, film advance. And once you do that, you get a reading um, inside your viewfinder and the viewfinder is of course another important feature. And unfortunately, this viewfinder has a strong bias for 40 millimeter frames, uh, frame lines and the 40 millimeter focal length. That means that um, first and foremost, the 40 millimeter frame lines are always with visible um, regardless of which lens you have attached. So you can also use it with a 50 millimeter lens or a 90 millimeter lens and you will get the appropriate frame lines um, displayed in the viewfinder. Um, but you cannot really use it with any wider lens. So if you want to use it with a 28 millimeter, for instance, you don't get any indication within the viewfinder of what would be an appropriate, um, what's, your, what's your framing would be and whether your composition is right or not. If you go wider, so if you shoot with a 24 or 21 millimeter lens, that's not a problem because as common for Leica, you would have to use an external viewfinder that you put on top of the camera anyways. But if you want to go for, uh, let's say um, 35 or a 28 millimeter, this is really a problem because there are no frame lines displayed for that. And with respect to um, the shutter, one can say that it's a um, vertical moving shutter with um, speeds ranging from half a second to one one thousandth of a second plus the regular bulb mode. And uh, you have a shutter speed dial that is located at the front of the camera, which is also interesting because once you get your, used to it, of course, you can just keep the camera up at your eye and move the shutter speed with your index finger of your right hand. And that works really great also because that the indication inside the viewfinder is moving in the same direction as you would to turn your finger. Unfortunately, that does not work um, with the aperture. So the aperture ring is of course a different movement as the um, shutter speed movement here. So they're kind of working um, against each other <laughs> in many ways, which is sometimes irritating. The most irritating thing in the inside the viewfinder is the indication um, that you get from your light meter because um, it's upside down. <laughs> it's a center of the needle um, mechanism on the very right side on the, of the viewfinder. And um, you always have to aim a little bit um, underneath the center if you wanna overexpose it. <laughs> and um, if your needle is above it, above the center, it's basically meaning uh, it's underexposed. And that of course is uh, very counterintuitive and you should be aware of that. With respect to the handling, um, I can say that I overall really enjoyed it and found it mostly intuitive. Um, but personally, I found that the build quality does not live up to what I would expect from a Leica M mount rangefinder. Um, and that's really a strong difference if you compare it to Leica M6 or um, any other Leica M mount, in my opinion. Um, you can really feel that difference and coming from a Leica M mount, it did have some trouble using it because there are certain quirks um, um, like if you pull the film advance in order to activate the light meter, you cannot continue to pull it all the way. If you want to press the shutter, you have to loosen it a little bit and only then you can um, actually press the shutter and little things like that um, that make it um, a, a bit more difficult and less intuitive in my opinion. Jules on the other hand who uh, has not as much experience shooting a Leica M mount um, camera as I did um, and who's more coming from more traditional SLR systems and other range finders, um, he had no problem at all shooting the Leica CL. So it seems like I had some kind of uh, expectations coming to the CL. And of course, handling the lens feels completely the same like on a Leica M6 or M3. And then the rest felt kind of, okay, this is different and this is weird and what's going on here. So this was my experience at least um, handling it.
So what are the shortcomings of the Leica CL? Most importantly, it's a rather short, effective um, rangefinder base length, which basically means that if you shoot a lens at a rather large aperture, so wide open, and you want to focus correctly at close range, this might be a problem because of that short effective rangefinder base length. And that also holds true or is particularly strong with a longer lenses like a 90 millimeter lens that you want to shoot correctly and focus correctly or accurately at f2.8 for instance. And that might also be another reason despite the fact that they wanted to create inexpensive lenses why the 90 millimeter um, f4 lens, um, the C-series lens that Leica introduced along with the CL, only features an aperture of f4 wide open. Um, because they were probably uncertain whether you can focus that accurately with the short effective um, rangefinder base length that it comes along with. Um, another important shortcoming in my opinion is that incompatibility with certain lenses so that you really uh, have to make sure that you don't use uh, a lens that has a protruding rear element that might interfere with the um, uh, light meter arm and um, also lenses that are collapsible you can usually not collapse all the way down because of that. So in order to avoid damage you should always um, keep them basically um, fully open. Um, last but not least, I also want to mention that, uh, in my opinion, the viewfinder is pretty crowded um, because of all the frame lines that are always visible and all the additional information that is there. Plus, it also feels a little bit cramped and small. Um, the viewfinder patch, uh, the rangefinder patch itself is pretty bright and clean and well defined, but everything else feels uh, like a lot of clutter. And here, if you compare it to, let's say, the Leica M3, for instance, that only displays the important frame lines and is really beautiful and bright and large and uh, offers no additional information here, um, this is much nicer, um, in my opinion, than the Leica CL and what it offers. And last but not least, and as mentioned before a little bit, the build quality does not really live up to what I would expect from a Leica M mount rangefinder. And here you can really see the difference and uh, the kind of compromise that Leica and Minolta had to make in order to bring that camera to the market as inexpensively as they did at the time. <music> So the big question at the end of every camera review is would we recommend buying this camera? And in the case of the Leica CL, the answer is really, it depends. If you are looking for a Leica M camera with the great build quality that it's famous for, with the great design and handling and feel to it and sound to it and all that is the Leica M mount myth then the Leica CL is probably too much of a compromise for you and you might be disappointed because of the way it works and handles and feels and the limitations that I've mentioned about the short effective rangefinder bay flanks and things like that. But if you are looking for a second Leica M mount body, for instance, if you're incredibly rich, or if you just wanna have an interchangeable M mount camera that is very small and light 
and that you can use for let's say street shots or for shots around family and friends and where you just want to have let's say one 40 millimeter lens attached to it all the time then you this is a really great camera it's a really great compact camera and you might want to take a look at it and you get amazing optical quality from these lenses for the kind of money that you put into it because the body can be had relatively cheap and then it's only up to you to decide for the kind of 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter lens that you want to attach to it there are also third-party lenses like an m-mount that are great and um, so this is just a question of what you're looking for and then we could also recommend buying it. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the Leica CL. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends. As always, we're really looking forward to reading your comments in the comments section below. So leave us some comments, Jules and I get excited about that. And um, if you liked our content, like this um, video, please remember to subscribe to our channel. As you know, we are super excited about each and every subscriber coming our way. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.